Hello, friends. Good morning. This is Josue Batista, your host at What and Why First Live. This is my fourth live event. It is a learning experience, and I am very lucky because I have extremely bright and patient friends. In this case, my guest is Steve Park. Steve, I've been extremely patient, uh, working with me along the way, getting all this live stream organized and, and out the door. Steve is a, a brilliant entrepreneur. He is a, a, we have known each other for several years uh, from the time that we were in the, in the healthcare payer space. Uh, Steve, since then, have a great career in, in several areas, including uh, most recently a, a true entrepreneur in the digital space in the HR uh, optimization uh, area. That, that is the main point today. So I'm very glad. Steve, thank you. Thank you for joining uh, me today. Um, please, Steve, um, if you want to tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Josue, for inviting me. Uh, I've been following you with your journey around the digital transformation. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to have a conversation with you about some of the things that we're recognizing in the industry, especially around uh, the HR recruiting process and as it pertains to corporate, uh, corporate culture. And so I'm um, excited to um, have a conversation and be able to uh, recognize what's happening in industry, uh, what's happening and what's evolving and how we can improve that collectively uh, so that at the end of the day, we are all successful in trying to find the best hires out there because we know it's a challenge, especially considering the times. So thank you so especially much. Especially considering the times that we are, right? Um, more than ever, I think is, is from, I, I don't want to spend that much time on that because it's evident to everybody. Uh, COVID has introduced a, a, a completely different paradigm to a lot of things, including the procurement retention and, and qualification of talent, right, for organizations. Um, Organizations have to continue to operate in some cases. In some others, um, they have probably to shut down. But those ones that are still operating, they have different challenges. And, and I think that is important to qualify for the, the audience that is right now here. You know, the people that day-to-day -day interact with um, talent, resources, acquisition, retention, qualification. Uh, Steve, in, in your experience, and based on what you know, who, who should be listening or paying attention to this um, live event or to this conversation? How would you describe that, that individual? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say that you know, there are different um, participants as part of that recruiting process. And so every organization, small or large, um, has a process in which how they go about um, trying to identify your requirements, publishing that information out there to be able to find and recruit the right people. And that whole process is a very uh, a, a challenging one. And considering the remoteness of um, the situation, getting that level of intimacy and understanding and insights about that person is even more difficult, especially not having that face-to-face -face interaction. And so the folks who are on the front lines, especially the recruiters out there, whether they're for recruiting for a, 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 within a company, or you're providing that service out there, I think we're always looking out for talent. And so those folks, we wanna enable them to help, be, help them become more successful and bridging that gap between what, what your hiring team and your organization needs and, what, and how they can bring those people in. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about that today, but the recruiting folks is definitely uh, one folks that should be, um, be interested. Uh, the other uh, parties involved uh, will be equally as interested is the hiring team. And so, um, you know, what we want to bring to the table in our conversation today is how do they become integral in that process and get their input, not just what the requirements are, but truly understanding, getting more insights about those candidates to see how it can best match other candidates. And then finally, the candidates themselves, um, they have an opportunity to express themselves beyond the words. And so uh, one of the focuses that we want to talk about today is around um, bringing that sentiment forward and how what their attitudes are in relationship to corporate culture 
that they're seeking in trying to find the best, best match. So, so those are the types of folks that are involved and would benefit from this conversation today. Right. Thank you. And, and I think I, I, in general, you know, even broadening this a little bit more, um, you know, executives, you know, board of directors, um, um, some of my conversations are particularly addressing board of directors because they have a tough, tough decisions to make at this point, right? They, they need to be clever in terms of operations, savings, costs, you know, operational is, is changing dramatically. Uh, even before COVID, you know, we were seeing that. So I, I will say probably, you know, I have a significant number of board of directors following me on LinkedIn. This will be something that will be beneficial for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that we'll speak yeah. to a little bit later in the conversation as well is mm -hmm. around corporate, cor uh, corporate values versus corporate culture and how that actually transcends into the actual execution and trying to find people and making sure that those corporate cultures are uh, being, um, uh, being aligned early so that their decisions on who they hire will, um, will be a, a more successful relationship and more satisfying. And so that too, yes, absolutely. Um, their input into that drives um, the requirements on the front end. Good. So now, now that we established that, Steve, um, let's go over the, some of the, the, the challenges that they're facing. And I know that you have a, a presentation to, uh, to walk us along the way to understand this, that I, I think it's extremely important to go into the background, right? How, how, what has happen, happening over the last few years? Sure. How digitalization, in my, in my words, digitization as opposed to digitalization have been happening and, and how that has evolved into a complete different set of challenges that perhaps people didn't think perhaps five, 10 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let me share my screen here and we'll get started with that. Sure. Okay. So yeah, thank you, Josue. When we look at um, digital transformation or digitization over the, over the years, um, I wanted to provide an illustration of kind of what has evolved over time. And so when we look at over the past several decades, you look at the utilization of technology and their effectiveness, I wanted to show some relationship of what's transpired and what's coming and what, what the potential challenges are. And so this is illustrative view uh, around, you know, for the folks who um, were old enough <laughs> to remember searching want ads uh, through the newspaper and sending resumes through the mail. Uh, back in the day, um, that was the primary primary uh, means of doing so, so high utilization, but over time with technology and such and, and trans digital transformations, that has evolved. Now let's say sometime in the early 80s and 90s, you know, fax became more in fashion and then ultimately email, but then again, having a similar trend in which there's high utilization of new innovations, but the overall effect of this and, and burdens and how it is to uh, support the recruiting process is, you know, becoming more difficult. And then we look at the 90s and through the current periods of time, um, what I want to highlight here was, you know, that transformation of, you know, uh, digitizing those processes or, or met methods to post jobs out in uh, companies such as Monster to share and bring together candidates and employers of what jobs there are. And over the past, you know, 10, 15 years, there's been an explosion in the industry around all different type of solutions out there, whether they're applicant tracking systems, recruiting systems, um, resume, a resume uh, search engine, AI engines, um, video uh, interviewing and such, it's exploded. And I think that is definitely a great um, uh, direction in which how to further enable um, the collaboration between the employers and, and candidates. But I think one of the things we still see is that even though the utilization um, um, trajectory is high and will continue as technology evolves, the results from all of these technologies and processes, we still see a gap between having hiring, uh, having success with their hires. And so, um, so today's conversation and, and, and this particular, from a history perspective, I think this is more of an acknowledgement that, you know, again, we're doing great things out there um, but there's still challenges with, with actually finding the right person, especially um, the ones that fit your culture. So um, 
So yeah, so that's just a, a recognition of that there. And so when we look at the evolution of technologies, um, we look at, well, so what are those challenges? And through some uh, references, as well as through our own conversations with employers out there, um, the majority of hires are wrong. And so um, that's a challenge. And so that we're trying to solve. Um, the result of that goes without saying, you know, good people leave your company. There's low, low satisfaction with employee, with employee satisfaction. And there's obviously opportunity cost or opportunity lost of having a bad hire. And so those are the challenges are associated that we still have today, notwithstanding the capabilities. And then secondly, um, we ask ourselves, well, why is that happening? What, what, what's contributing to this? And so whether you're a small company or a large company, there's always pressures and demands to find great candidates uh, from a large pool of, of, of potential candidates out there. And we need to do it quickly. And so sometimes the process of getting through something quickly um, to balance out with the demands to have someone available, available as soon as you can, sometimes falls through the cracks there. The other thing we're also recognizing here is that there's a heavy emphasis of the requirements of what types of people we're looking for, what are their qualifications, and they're really oriented around the criteria for how do we find people that we think may meet the needs of our job, uh, job rack that we're looking for. And what we're also coming to realization and recognizing is that the criteria of what you search for is, doesn't necessarily translate into your hiring criteria. You know, I think again, the heavy emphasis of finding what the best candidates are that are available, but less on the criteria of how, you know, what a successful hire is going to be. So I think there's a more emphasis and thinking around that would be great to improve it. Um, the other thing which is, I think, um, unfortunately true is that interviewing and inter in the interview process is more of an art than it is a science. I mean, there was definitely training around how to interview people and various techniques but the reality is, is that it's a very subjective process. And quite frankly, all of us aren't great at it. You know, interview is a necessary, necessary means to be able to better understand someone, but to really get insights around what that person is and do you believe what their credentials are and, and how they express themselves. It's a very, it's a really tough process. And to make uh, even things even more challenging is that you do have candidates that have really good interviewing skills. And so they have the unique ability to be able to appeal to that hiring team dynamically in the process to get their job, to get the job and to convince someone saying, hey, I'm good at this and you should hire me. But does it really reflect their abilities? It's to be determined. And the unfortunate reality is, is that um, once you've hired that person, you really don't know who they are until they're on the job. And that's when you find out whether or not if that person fits into your culture and that culture really impacts how they uh, work with one another and their attitudes and priorities, um, you kind of find that after the fact. So to sum it up this way, um, it's hard. It's very hard. Right. And so um, that, that's when we look at the history and some of the challenges that we have, uh, even with the evolution of technology, we're still in a tough spot. And so, but we, but we feel that we can make it better. Right, and, and Steve, uh, you know, I have been over the years at both ends, right? I've been part of a team that is looking for, for some talented individual to, to become a member of the organization or the team through the interviewing process um, and the selection process and all the, the evaluations that you do. And, it is tough because you, 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 that is not your full-time job, right? So sometimes members of a team, they don't, perhaps they don't have the training, they don't have the, the ability to, or, or the skill set, even though they generally want to contribute and they want to do a good job. Um, but that is one challenge. And then the other is being on the other end, right? So I have been, of course, over the years on the other end, being someone uh, applying for a job. Um, and more than often, I find myself with people who, who are not prepared for the for the interview? They are not really have a, a clear understanding or criteria up to the job requirements. So that is also tough. And now add to that the constraints from a, a budget perspective, right? Because sometimes, you know, I have seen you know too many what I call uh, purple squirrels. You know, you you see people looking for purple squirrels, meaning 
this candidate that has all these qualifications, right? You know, two, three different roles in one, right? And then you have the constraint of budget. You don't want, you know, there is a budget constraint in, in addition to that. That makes us also extremely challenging. So w- what is next then on this? So is, if we acknowledge these are very valid challenges, so wh- where do we go from here? Yeah, um, thanks for asking. And, and you're right, it's, it's challenges on both sides. You know, to be able to express our, you know, clearly what your wants and needs are for an organization, as well as sharing as a candidate, sharing your sentiment of what, how you portray yourself in terms of what you're seeking from a culture standpoint. And so in addition to your qualifications and everything else. So, so that being said, um, I wanted to put a scenario here to kind of reinforce that message. So I'm sure we've been in situations um, when you've, you've gone through this whole vetting cycle around, um, you know, uh, qualifications, education, experience, and all the requirements uh, around the recruiting process, but you finally get to a certain subset of finalists and say, well, how do I choose? You know, mm-hmm. I think we've come into situations where if you're lucky, you know, lucky enough, you have more than three, but the fact is, is that how do you choose one from another? You know, if they, again, if they're all equally yoked around their capabilities, experience, and they're nice people, they interviewed well and everything else, so what ends up happening is that it ends up being um, a gut feeling. And the majority of time, I think gut feeling as professionals um, in, in these positions of decision, we're going to make a pretty good decision, but you're not going to always be right. And I think that's where the gap still comes into play around the subjectivity. And sometimes as part of the decision-making process, um, there's also unconscious bias as individuals. And there's also group bias as a pressure with pressures amongst the hiring team. And so, um, you know, that decision process, decision making process, as we said before, was it's hard. And so what we want to do is is be able to help by removing some of that subjectivity. And so um, what we want to focus on is be able to get alignment as part of the future direction of, of assisting with the uh, cultural match process is that you know, again, we're recognizing that there's lots of data that we have from various systems. Um, we have very, but we have limited insights about the person. Um, a lot of companies invest in company values, which is great to advertise on a website and share with the organization. But sometimes those values don't really translate into the culture. And as part of the recruiting and hiring process, company culture is not necessarily explicit as part of the process. I think it's implicit and it's usually unsaid because it's just one of those things that are not in a checkbox during the, the job the job creation process of what those things are, but that's where we feel one of the gaps are. Right. And, so and Steve, about, yeah, go ahead. Before, before you go there into, into the culture aspect, you know, I, I think going back to the, the current state, um, I generally think that most people are well-intentioned you know, when they are going through the process of identifying, qualifying, and selecting, you know, talented individuals for their organization. Uh, but you, you are right on point there in the sense that all this criteria that we have been using over the years to eliminate in our organizational minds, eliminate subjectivity, because we have been adding, like you saw in the prior slide, we have been adding a lot of quantitative analysis, you know, a lot of data in order to overcome our organizational sense that we need to be you know, fair and objective. But then at, at the very end, there is, there is this subjectivity that is like a full circle, right? Comes back to the point that someone at, at one point, all things being equal, how do you select the individual that is going to be part of your team for, out of several candidates that all things being equal goes back to subjectivity. So it, it, it is, it is a challenging situation in current state and, and sorry to interrupt you there. So yeah. please go back up yeah. to the, to the your slide on the culture aspect of this. Yeah. Josue, you're, you're spot on. You know, I think it's, they're all, well, everyone's well intended. So I want to be clear that I'm not critiquing organizations. It's just right. this is how it is because the process is I try to give, all the requirements as best I can to help with that recruiting process. But, and what gets lost um, is that culture. 
And, you know, a definition by Dr. Elliot Jacques here, I thought it was a good one here, is organizational culture encompasses values and behaviors that contribute to the unique social and psychological environment of the business. So the definition, I think, is a nice one, but how do you articulate that? How do you make that tangible, right? And how do you incorporate that as part of your hiring process? And today, um, you know, there's opportunities to improve that. And so when we look at uh, that alignment, we have, uh, with Priority Bridge, have delivered a solution that helps with that cultural alignment. And specifically through what we call those cultural fit assessments, we enable teams, hiring organizations and their hiring teams to get aligned right from the beginning uh, of what those criteria are, the prioritization and quantification process around that, and having some baseline of what is most important, not just in rank order, but also the magnitude of importance, because not all, not all values or culture attributes are the same. And so what we do there is that by quantifying that, we then also enable uh, organizations to invite their candidates to take these assessments as well. And to be able to take those results and illuminate some insights about those candidates in relationship to your hiring team. And so we feel we bring a very unique uh, solution to the, uh, the marketplace, which we've recently gone live with, uh, to be able to do that. And so uh, the final point around the culture and alignment is that, you know, a lot of organizations, most organizations will have a common set of psychological and social criteria or ingredients that is a makeup of their organization. But the difference is that each organization has a different magnitude of importance in relationship mm -hmm. to those criteria. And so um, this is where I think there's a great opportunity for organizations to A, quantify what they think it is. <laughs> right. And then secondly, be able to use that in a way that directly ties to understanding, getting insights to your candidates in relationship to you, which in, in, in what we've talked about in the past couple of slides here in the past few minutes is around that subjectivity is hard to get. And so when we can quantify those things, we can augment your hiring processes and to, to enable organizations to have higher confidence in their decisions. And so um, we feel that there's an exciting opportunity for uh, the industry to be able to take advantage of that. And so from a solutions perspective, what I wanted to bring forward here um, is an example. And it's actually a real live example. Uh, however, I changed the name of the candidate. But what I'm sharing, with you, sharing uh, here with you um, is, a, is an output of that process. And so what I wanted to illuminate here is that this is a, um, an assessment result that um, Joe candidate took and highlight a couple of features here. Uh, one, two things are one is when I talked about the hiring team baseline based on the criteria that they went through and what they went through the prioritization process on the left hand side, you'll see what the hiring team's priorities were in, in aggregate. And then in relationship with the candidates, we start illuminating the differences. And so um, this is a really powerful tool in terms of getting some of those insights to be able to uh, bring that forward as part of your, your process. And so the candidate match score is 69%. Um, the number itself um, is subjective in terms of um, how good or bad it is, but it gives you some general alignment of this person generally aligns with us, but there's some differences. And then when we look at some of the additional insights here is that um, when you look at what was most important for the hiring team in relationship to the candidate, especially for a sales position, uh, from a, um, a priority bridge standpoint of what we're looking for, honesty and trust was the most important thing. It's critical for us in terms of how we act as a, as a business and how we expect uh, sales representatives to represent themselves and, and engage their, pros their prospects. But for, the, um, but for the candidate, it was the third most important thing. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong and the score and the answers here are not wrong. And it doesn't mean that this person's not honest, but in relationship to the position and what we're looking for in a candidate and their attitudes, this, the, this attitude of, of, of how we've identified what's important to us reflects our culture, right? Honesty and trust, responsibility and follow up and building that relationship and being personal and professional and courteous. It doesn't mean that the other attributes aren't important, but 
it really starts being able to bring to light and give you those insights in relationship to what you're looking for and what candidates are. Now, another, another bit of insight here to uh, bring forward is, again, the, the response in relationship to the hiring team, it doesn't mean that these people aren't these, you know, don't reflect these attributes, but it, it gives you some insights to what's important to them. How we can use this information is, is actually pretty interesting as well. And so if we were to proceed with this person, um, one of the things in preparations for an interview is, again, we would not show this data to the candidate, but, but, but at least the hiring team can start getting organized to say, well, well, what is it about you know, honesty and trust? Why was the third of the most, least, most important thing? And so you know, from a behavioral interview approach, um, you know, we would ask questions or, and put scenarios out there that tests what, what, how they would behave there. And so that's pretty powerful to get some of those insights prior to the interviews because traditionally, and I've been there and everyone else has been there before, you know, there are standard interview questions about what do you do, how do you deal with it, but when you have more insights about their sentiment about these attributes that are important from a culture standpoint, you can really hone in on getting more clarity there and making your, your interviews that more effective. Because again, on paper, you, you, you've seen that you check off the boxes of requirements of experience, et cetera. But when it comes to the true sentiment, you have an opportunity to really see that um, as part of this process. Right. And, and Steve, I want to stress for, for the audience, you mentioned it already, but this assessment, this alignment, the source of this information come from both places, right? From the candidate and also from the team that is going to be working with that person. It may not be necessarily a hiring team because sometimes in organizations, you have a hiring team that perform all the mechanics, but ideally this should be in alignment with the team that is going to be interacting day to day with this Absolutely. individual. Right? So th that is, that it brings some insights that otherwise, frankly, I, I don't see how else can you get this type of comparison, right? And again, it's a comparison of alignment, not necessarily in this case that the person is dishonest because he was in number three. It's just that the alignment in terms of what they consider important or relevant in their job is different than in this case and the one from the team, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that gets back to when we look at the technology evolutions and the challenges in the industry today, the, the success rate is still not high enough. You know, right. and again, when you, when you make that decision, those hard decisions to pick who you're going to, to bring on, you don't get those insights until after they join. So we feel that the value that we can bring to help quantify some of those insights about their true sentiment, getting alignment with the organization's sentiment uh, is, is a powerful tool that we think that um, we can provide some value for. Right. So, um, so a couple more things from my perspective, um, you know, again, from Priority Bridge standpoint, uh, we feel that this process can really aid in finding that right person the first time and every time. Um, and we'd love to have an opportunity to work with folks to do that. Uh, I wanted to uh, add one more thing here, Josue, uh, as it pertains to the solution, because we get asked this question quite a bit, um, because they usually, they really like some of these insights here and how to do this and the, some of the results. Uh, and the question is, you know, where does that fit in the process? You know, when, where, when do we use this, this, this capability? And so there's four kind of simple um, areas of where you can leverage this. One is uh, what I call the pre-job posting process. So when in the early stages, when you're defining uh, your, your position and your job requisition and all your requirements, we see that you can leverage our capabilities to do a baseline of the, of the hiring team or the folks who are gonna be stakeholders in this. And so you can go through a qualification and quantification process as part of that. Once you've posted those jobs, um, you can then send out these assessments to your candidates as part of the pre-screening process. And so when you, in addition to your existing processes around how you filter, if you have your candidates take these assessments, you'll be able to see reports as such, uh, like you saw on the prior screen, as well as some other different reporting to do compare and contrast of candidates. You can use this to help filter this even further, depending on your organization's preference. And so for example, if there's a threshold that a candidate must meet 75% of a match, you can use that to be able to help assist with your filtering and prioritization of who you who you're going to have a follow-up phone call with and such. 
Um, and the third, uh, third scenario here is around the pre-interview. As I mentioned before, um, when you have these insights of these candidates, in addition to their, their resumes and such, um, you're going to be able to, again, target some specific questions and scenarios to further understand where there's some gaps between your priorities and what their priorities are. And then finally, uh, during the hiring decision process, although there's many different um, uh, bases of what, who you're going to hire and, and why, why you're going to hire, um, the nice part is that um, with this information, you then do have traceability back to some to the, the scores from a culture standpoint to help support your decision making process as well. And so, um, wanted to bring that forward as well. So, yeah, very very good points, Steve. Um, so it, it is very dynamic. In the sense, I I figure you know when when you first introduce this concept and this vision of of alignment of cultural alignment in, into the HR process using digitalization. I was fascinated because this is what digitalization is about, right? We, we want to take advantage, leverage um, the technology that we have to solve, you know, business problems that, uh, business challenges that otherwise it would be extremely difficult just using our intuition and our guts yeah. to arrive to a, a, a very, you know, good conclusion, you know, as to who to hire, who to bring into the team. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate the opportunity to have a conversation with you today, Josue. Uh, I know I can talk about this for hours, but I, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> your time and others, and maybe for another time we can further probe into this, but uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, have this conversation about uh, some of the transformations that are happening within the industry and an opportunity to be able to share uh, what we're trying to bring to the table to help organizations um, you know, hire better people and have higher successes. Right. So, Steve, if you if you could uh, stop sharing your your slide because uh, your presentation, I have the um, the last slide with your contact info sure. uh, available. So let's let's bring us back here to our main screen. Here we are. So thanks again, Steve. This has been extremely informative um, for me, especially because, as I said before, I have been in both ends. And I, this is a, a game changer. It's something, the concept itself, it, it is solid, meaning that you need to include the culture into your selection process. The question is, how do you do that, right? How do you quantify, qualify, assess culture alignment, right? Yeah. When it, it's extremely difficult to even define what culture is. And there is an old saying that says, culture eats process for breakfast every day. <laughs> Meaning that it doesn't matter what process you, you establish in your organization, most likely the culture is going to override a lot of the good things that probably that process is intended to do. Yeah. So and, and we know that we're not going to change culture, right? Culture is, is a complete different discussion. We can probably talk for hours about that. Yeah. So the question is, you know, how do you leverage what you have today, right? So you have a, a culture that is functioning, that is, that is operational. How do you then align your resources to that cultural state in, in order to, to maximize you know, the qualification, selection, identification of talent? And I, and I think that concept itself is great. And you know, for the individuals and leaders um, watching and listening to this event, there, are, there is a tool that you, you created. You have a plan and you have a tool that is actually available to, to actually materialize, execute that concept in organizations. And I wanna share with, with um, our team here, the, um, your, your contact information. So here it is, I, I really encourage um, you, if you're watching this event, you're listening to this event, to reach out to Steve. Steve is, as, again, I can vouch for that. I have known Steve for several years. He is a great individual, a thought leader, and, and this concept, this idea, is, is he's very passionate about it, and he would be more than glad to have a conversation. We, we have our, at least you know, half an hour of this conversation here. Some of you, I know that you had a challenge uh, getting live stream working from LinkedIn. That is an ongoing issue that I have with the LinkedIn uh, technical team. Uh, eventually, we'll get it right. Uh, but I'll be releasing uh, this video in, in fragments and segments over the next few days. So all of you can see the complete, the complete picture of the, this presentation 
uh, from Steve and, and, and the idea of introducing digitalization into the HR uh, process. Steve, so we were approaching uh, the end of, of our event. Thanks again for, for joining me today. I'm being so patient over the last few days, getting all this organized. And I, I wish, you, wish you the best to you and your team. I think you have a very valuable proposition and I, I, I cannot wait to see where it takes you, you know, in, in your journey, in the professional journey. It's, it's quite exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, and I appreciate supporting your endeavors. And um, I look forward to um, having some of our folks watching this uh, give us a reach out. And uh, let's start this journey together. You got to start somewhere. And so trans transformation starts with the first step. So, exactly. Um, um, <laughs> we have, plenty, we have plenty, plenty of opportunities to improve things. Very good. Very good. So, Steve, thanks again. And our friends, as I always say, until next time, cheers. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Hi, I am Josue Batista from What and Why First. I created this video blog to share with you my thoughts about relevant trends in leadership, strategy, innovation, and value creation. If you want to watch more videos, Make sure you follow my blog so you never miss any of my new videos with more tips about technology and business. And if you are already a senior leader in charge of making decisions in your organization and you would like to put some of these strategies in place for yourself, go to josuebatista.com and learn how I can help you.